Black graduating seniors banquet that you all are enjoying so much today. So can we please have a round of applause for this banquet? I call them my tag team. Brian and Ryan Swan are alumni, entrepreneurs, and public servants originally from Maryland. They both are senior vice president of Bible Inc. and technology wellness marketing company, company grossing over $130 million annually. So they say to me, once they personally start making that, they're going to come back and renovate the Imbruder Culture Center. They led, train, and coach hundreds of business owners and executives in business and personal development to build wealth and well-balanced life. While in college, they, college here at the University of Maryland, they both served in the United States Marine Corps, where after a tour in Iraq, received several medals and awards for outstanding service. Brian Swan is also a program manager for the White House Military Office in the East Wing where he is involved in several presidential programs in a highly classified environment. During his matriculation, Brian has held several other key leadership positions for Circuit City Stores, Home Depot, and the United States Department of Defense. Ryan Swan is also a director for GSA, Office of Government Wide Policy, where he is head of business intelligence a program. Ron has held a wide range of leadership positions at the Department of Treasury, Bloom, and Circuit City Schools as well. <laughs> Additionally, Ron and Ron have served on a number of boards in both the public and private sectors. They continue their community work by facilitating achievement and success seminars to various organizations. In their free time, they both enjoy mentoring others playing off and traveling. A side note is, when Brian and Ryan was here at the University of Maryland, they was fashion guru. They, um, in, they was in charge of Dimension Fashion Show. I remember we had Todd's Theater then. Um, we had over a thousand people in there. Um, they had a bed on stage, a motorcycle, and one year, their production, it was such a risque production. Um, but you know what? They end up winning the University of Maryland Innovative Program of the Year. I couldn't believe that. I just shook my head and I had the program. But uh, it was entertaining. As you, you, I'm sure you know by now that they are twins. And um, I... You know, I love them so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, Ryan, I love my part, Ryan and Brian Swan. Um, can you guys hear us okay? Because I think we want to just step down here for one of you stage, if that's all right. Awesome. How you guys doing? Great. Well, first, uh, let me give it back to Ms. Carr as well. She, she does an awesome job here on campus. We want to definitely thank you for uh, inviting us out. Let's give um, and so, so I'm Ryan. He's Ryan. If you missed it, um, I want to first thank, uh, welcome all you guys. Uh, to the alumni uh, ranks, I want to congratulate you on graduating from, from, from this great institution. Uh, me and my brother um, are alumni, and, and I will tell you that this is not the end, it's the beginning. It's not the end, it's the beginning. You see, what you have to realize is that when you come into a university like this, uh, they teach you how to learn, right? You learn the system. If you follow what I'm saying? When you got here, you didn't know what the, the trials and tribulations you were going to go through to get to where you guys are at today. And so what, one of the things that, that I realized that when I was here at University of Maryland um, uh, reminds me of a, a quick story I want to tell you guys. You see, uh, my aunt had this tube of toothpaste. 
And this tube of toothpaste had a device on the end of it. And as she used the tube of toothpaste, she would turn this device. Right? She would turn it, and more toothpaste would come out. She would turn it some more, and more toothpaste would come out. I realized that my aunt got more out of her tube of toothpaste than we got out of our tube of toothpaste at my house. You guys follow what I'm saying? <laughs> now, 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 let me relate it to where you at. Some of you got more out of your education in these last four, five, six, maybe seven years than some of the other ones. You guys follow? Now, you guys want because see, here, here's why. You see, some of you come, came, you, you went to school, you, 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 did, you, you studied, um, and, you, and you graduate. That's great. But some of you also are leaving this, this, this university with, with mentors and, 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 and networks and access to an alumni association that is phenomenal. And then some of you understand that they came to this university, got the mentors, got the, got the networks, and realized that, that there is something bigger and greater than just yourself out there. Does that make sense? So, so some of you got more than the person sitting next to you. And so what, I, what we want to talk about real briefly is, is how to be successful transitioning from, from where you are today to, to where you're going. And as we kind of talk through that, we want to make sure that, that you got the tools that you need, that you understand that the, that, that the resources that are here to help you bridge that gap. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to my brother. Awesome. So, so let's jump right into this. So, so guys, listen. Um, we're a very interactive two individuals, so there's definitely going to be some participation. I know some of you are still eating. That's fine. Um, but listen, um, one thing you got to understand where you're going from here is your professional development. Okay. From up to this point, it's all a bit about academic development. Am I making sense? Okay. And so what I want to briefly talk about is, is what you need to know to be successful in any professional environment. Okay? We have been ultra successful in the private sector. We've been ultra successful in the military. We've been ultra successful in the federal government. And we have been pretty successful in business and entrepreneur in traditional business, in real estate, in stocks and investing, and as well as network marketing. Okay? And if you know anything for any business majors that are in here, I pretty much hit every possible angle that you would want to ever possibly work in or find a job in or pursue. And there's some common things that we have not only learned that we've done ourselves, but we have spent tens of thousands of dollars with multi-millionaires training ourselves to be the best individuals that we could be. And what we're going to do in the next 20 minutes is shorten your learning curve. You make sense? So if you're ready, Say I'm ready. Amen. No, no, you're not ready. <laughs> no, no. If you're ready, say I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Because what we're about to give you, what we're about to explain to you, okay, is something that honestly, to be frank, just, just to put you in perspective and value, okay, P people would pay thousands of dollars to hear, to just to know. See, no knowledge is power, right? But it's only power when you take action. Okay, so let's, professionally, what do you need? Okay, so you obviously need a good attitude. I'm not going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to give you some skills right now. So I don't know if you want to take out your phone, you want to get a pen out, you want to do something at this point. Okay, because no matter what your degree, what your degree is in, no matter what you want to do, you're going to need to know these things to be successful. Okay, because when you go into an interview, we're kind of the two guys that sit on those type of panels. Okay? When you submit an application to a school, a graduate school, we're the type of guys that review the application to say, does this person really have what it takes? And it's not all about grades. Okay? But before I jump into that, let me ask you a question. What, do, what would you say is successful to you? What, what is successful? Somebody throw it out. What's successful? Is successful income? Reaching your goals. A successful income. What about income? Success, the success, the success in income is directly correlated. Yes? The more success you have, typically the more income you have. Typically. Typically. That's your goal. Okay? Here's the here's, here's reality. Here's the reality. The average college student graduates. Let's see here. The average
average student gra in the United States graduates, uh, you're going to come out with, you're going to make on average, on average, about $46,000 a year. Okay? $46,000 a year. Okay, that's about $10,000 less than the national average. Okay, the national average is hovering right around about $56,000 a year. Okay? Now, can you guys hear me fine? Oh, this is better? Yes. All right, awesome. You're, you're amazing, brother. <laughs> no. Okay? But let me tell you this. When we graduated from college, and this was many, many years ago. Not many, but many. But many. Um, we were making twice the national average. <laughs> Some of y'all just that went totally over your head, but maybe somebody over here cut it. Okay? And let me tell you why we, we were. I'm going to tell you why we were. It's because three things you need to know to professionally develop. Okay? Get this, get this guys. You got to get this. You got to get this. You got to get it. I got a lot of time. Okay? You gotta get it. The first thing you got to understand is, ex is excellence. Okay? Excellence in everything that you do. And let me tell you why. People watch you. They watch everything you do when you think it's not important. When you think it's beneath you, they're watching you. They're watching to see how you conduct yourself. If you can't handle a small task and be extraordinary at it, how would they ever think you're going to handle a big task and be extraordinary at it? Okay? When we, we, when we graduated from uh, college and as we had throughout our career, we've always made sure that everything that we did represents us, represents yourself, rep represents me as Brian Swan. And if I had my hand in it, I don't care how big or how small, I was going to do it 150% better than the next person. Not because I had to, not because they expected me to, but because I wanted to. You see, the problem, the problem that most people have when they come out of college and they try, to, they try to get this, they try to go compete, is you don't push yourself. Because all your life people have been pushing you. And the moment you leave this university, nobody's going to be pushing you. So excellence is about pushing yourself. And if you can't do that, guys, listen, you're coming into a world that's very, very competitive. Right? I'm sure you heard on the news the last two years, three years, companies laying off people, government downsizing. You hear these things? Yes? 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 No? Maybe? Okay. You're going to be competing for jobs, and you're going to be competing for, if you're going to grad school, you're going to be competing with people that have years and years of experience. For jobs, you're going to have to keep people that have multiple degrees, and you got to have something that stands out for you that they don't have. Okay? So that's the first thing I want you to understand. Alright? How are you going to be excellent in everything you do? The second thing is learn a system. Everybody say system. 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 Everything you do, I don't care if you want to be a doctor, I don't care if you want to be a lawyer, I don't care if you want to be a nurse, you want to be a caregiver, whatever it is you want to do in life, it has a system. And the most wealthiest people in this world learn and master systems. They don't try to change the system. They don't try to, they don't try to take an old system and change it. They don't do that. Some people create new systems, but most people master the system when they're ultra successful. And that's exactly what we did. We mastered the system in all the different areas I spoke about. And so, what I would encourage you, wherever you're going, Learn a system. Learn that office, that, that industry system. That's the only way you're going to be successful. Okay? And that's how, before the age of 30, we have reached the highest levels of this government. And not because we, ran, not because we helped on anybody's political campaign. Okay? Not because of that. Think about that. Think about how many people in their 20s sit on boards. There's a reason. And you got to understand it. And if you get these small concepts and you start applying it right now and learning, see, you already proved that you can learn. Okay? 
All I'm saying is now learn something that's going to affect your life. Because the reality is most of you will not work in the industries your degrees are in. That's the reality. Right? I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know if I see the gentleman. I was talking to a gentleman in the elevator, and he told me what his degree was in. And he said, honestly, I just want to make some money when I leave school. <laughs> I mean, really. Right? And the last thing I want you to, I want you to understand, I want you to, 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 to kind of write down, professionally, is networking. Okay? And I, I know you're going to hear it's kind of hard a little bit on this point because um, you're coming in a world where we're all very connected. Right? When we graduated, there was no Facebook. Well, Facebook had kind of like just started. Right? Only. All right? It was just like college is only. It really wasn't business oriented. It had any impacts. I'm going to tell you, if you come apply for any job that has anything related to any one of my businesses or for the White House, the first thing you're going to do is find you on Facebook. So, I would encourage you to go back onto your Facebook page. If you got pictures with you in the dorm room and y'all just having it, y'all throwing them back, just go ahead and delete those. Unfortunately, they're out there, so they're going to be out there somewhere, but at least they're not on your page. They're not directly apparent. But networking, guys, join your association, okay? Uh, alumni association. But more importantly, also, Join the so this is what this is what a lot of us don't do. I'm gonna tell you, this is what we don't do. Okay? Y'all wanna know what we don't do? And this is why we don't get anywhere. Okay? That's right here, I'm giving to you. You gotta, you gotta be ready. Whatever industry you go into and you start off in that industry, say it's federal government, say it's engineering, say it's medical, join associations that are in that field immediately. And I don't care if you're just a general member and you just sit in the back and listen. But the fact that you're there is going to put you in positions that you, you haven't even fathomed yet. Just being in the room. Okay? And those associations are not going to be cheap. They're going to have dues. They're going to have fees. They're going to require you to volunteer. They're going to require you to do things to better the association and not yourself. Initially. But you've got to know that that's important. That's all about learning the system. You see, your degree, your resume just gets you in the door. What keeps you in the job, or gets you the job, or gets you promoted, or gets you ele uh, 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 elevated, where, you're, where jobs come to you versus you going to a job, is because you learn the system, you strive for excellence, and you network. Am I making sense? Yeah. Awesome. So, you got personal, I mean professional development, but then you got personal development. And let me, I mean, one of my mentors, our mentor, said once, you got to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Let me say that again, because I think you guys didn't get it. You got to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. You see, if you work harder on yourself, your job will benefit, will it not? Right? If you, if you learn a second language, a third language, a fourth language, will your job not, not benefit? But, but now you have a skill, you have something additional to, 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 to give to society, to your, uh, your community, your church, whatever it is that, that you care about, you got to work hard on yourself. And so personal development, and, and, and I'm not going to uh, belabor the point, but personal development is about you seeking knowledge. Um, I, I tell them as we were talking here earlier, in the time that I graduated, after we graduated college, in that eight month period after college, I read more books than I read in my entire college career. I read more books. That's, that's a lot of books. But, but those books had a, had a tremendous impact on not only being successful out of college, getting out of debt, okay, but, but leadership and understanding uh, the, the, the system that we live in. And so I want to encourage you to, if you don't got a book list, get a book list. If you don't know where to get one, you can borrow ours, okay? And so it's one of those things that, that I never knew that there were books out there that could totally change my perspective on how we do everything, even on your job. And, and, and because of that personal development, that development of, of going in and attending leadership workshops, getting in the room, uh, becoming part of these associations, 
that allowed, that allowed us, and it can allow you, to really elevate where you want to be. And, and, and some people say, well, Ryan, it's not all about the money. You're right. It's not always about the money. We were just talking over here about social entrepreneurship. You know, I believe that when you're coming into a world where, where the next major trend of entrepreneurship will, will be on, with things that change the way people live and affect people's lives to its core. I'm talking like your health. I'm talking, I'm talking like, I'm talking about, I'm talking malnutrition. I'm talking things that, that, that you don't see here in the Washington, D.C. area, but if you leave these shores and you go overseas and, and you travel a little, you get, you get a, a little uh, a, a perspective on our world, you'll see that these things make a, a huge difference. So personal development, get a book list. Okay? The, 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 the third thing I would tell you is to get a mentor. And you can have mentors from all different walks of life. I have some mentors, I talk to them once a year. I have other mentors, I talk to them once a quarter. Some of them, it's email. Hey, what do you think about this? They email me back. And then one day, you'll be able to be the mentor. You'll turn around and you'll be standing up here and you'll, you'll help an a, a, a undergrad student, you'll help somebody develop in their past and, and, and their path and pay it forward. So you, you got to get a mentor, and, and I always believe, essentially we were talking about law, um, I always believe that if you're going to go to grad school, and some of you in here want to go to grad school, talk to somebody that has been through the program that you want to spend $200,000 on before you do it, okay? Because, because the per, the, your perception of what it is might, might not be what it truly is. And so you got to get a mentor, all right? Awesome. I hope you guys are getting this. We're we'll blowing through this yourself. So. I mean, we, 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 we do several workshops, day-long workshops on these individual topics. But what we're trying to give you is a perspective um, that wasn't given to us when we graduated. I mean, that, that's really what this is about. This is about far back in you. And though you may succeed professionally, and you may develop Personally, at the end of the day, what good is success, right, if you can't pass it on to the next generation, right? And so what I want to talk about really briefly is financial literacy, because this is another, um, just something we don't do. You understand what I'm saying? We just don't, we just don't do it. And you got to understand money, right? How is it that 97, I'm sorry, how is it that 3% of the world of the country makes more than 97% of the country combined? How is that? How is that? It's because those 3% know something that the other 97% doesn't know. And what I'm about to tell you is what the 3 percenters, what we do. <laughs> somewhere. It's going to take you to a person. It's going to take you to a book. It's going to take you to a workshop. And that workshop is going to act like a, a ping that you drop in a, in a lake. And it's going to have a small ripple, and a medium ripple, and a large ripple. And you're going to look back 10 years from now, and you're going to say, if I never came to this event, my life would have never changed. You understand what I'm saying? I can, I can think of three, count, three memorable moments in our lives where we made a decision that dramatically changed the next five years. And what you gotta understand is that you never know where you sit. And you never know why somebody's been put in front of you, or next to you, or at the table that you sit. And so you have to be a student of the game. I know that's saying, I know you're a young folks. You gotta be a student of the game. But we're, we're, the biggest game is the biggest game is the game of life. 
and life revolves around money, unfortunately. All right? We didn't make the game, but what we did was learn the system. And we mastered the system. We teach the system, and we help our family be in a different position than what we were. Okay? And there's three things you gotta know. Okay? You ready? Yes. Yeah, ready. <laughs> yeah, ready. There's three things you gotta know. No matter what you're doing, this, this has nothing to do with whatever career. This has this is what the question is, okay. Okay, all right, Brian, now I make $75,000 a year, now I make six figures, now I make $150,000. Oh, Brian, now I make $200,000 a year. Now what? What do you do? <laughs> exactly, exactly. This is why the 3% remain at 3% and the 97% remain at 97%. It's because you have to learn what, you gotta have a plan. That whatever career you pursue, whether it be anything or entrepreneur, and you reach a certain point, what are you doing with your money? You see, I believe when you make a dollar, then you make a dollar work for yourself. You know what I'm saying? You work for the dollar, then the, work, the dollar should then work for you. You don't work for the dollar and then go spend it on frivolous things and then got to go back and work for another dollar and then spend it on frivolous things and then go back and work for another And then you're going to realize that 30, 40 years have passed your life and you didn't actually live. So you can either work for a living or you can live. And, and by doing these principles, you can set yourself up for financial freedom. Okay? So the first thing you gotta do is you gotta take 25% of your income off the top, whatever money you make. I don't care if you make $10,000 a year, I don't care if you make $150,000 a year. You gotta get in the habit of taking 25% of your income off the break and putting it away. Right there. Okay? 25%. Now, now we're, now we're, now we're, we're God-fearing, we're God-fearing men, right? So we already know that 10% is coming off the top. So then 25% is coming off the top. So now, so now our income was at 100%, and now what's left is 65%. Okay? I'm going to tell you, this is what the wealthy people do. You want to know what the wealthy people do? I'm telling you right now. This is right here, how you be wealthy. Retire yourself at the age of 40. 10 years. 20 years. Done. Okay? While most people are retiring at 55, 60, they realize that retirement wasn't retirement, and then they're going to get another job because they can't live off their actual retirement. It's because they, they, didn't, they didn't follow this process. And you're getting this process right now so that you can start early enough that by the time you need it or the time you want to have it, it's ample. You have a, you have a, a extraordinary amount of investments. So you got to build a portfolio. Write these two words, two words down. Diversify my income. Let me say that again. Diversify my income. If you understand that concept, stay with me, guys. If you understand that concept, I promise you, in 40, at the age of 35, you will have more money in your bank account than some of your parents do after working all of their lives. See, y'all not, not hearing me. Y'all not getting me. I'm missing some people. I'm missing some people. Okay? Let me put it in perspective. Let me put it in perspective. Okay? Y'all heard of the sequestration furlough? Did you guys hear about this in 2013? Government was shutting down and uh, pe people, somebody got laid off. Alright? So we, we, we know about this. Okay? Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Okay? So my brother and I also work for the federal government, but we also have applied this process over the years. Investing not only just uh, uh, investments like stocks and bonds, but also real estate, right? But we didn't start off buying some lavish house, no. We got a small, one bedroom, little condo, but it can generate us $400 a month independently of us. Then once we got that one, over the course of years, then we acquired another one. Simple, nice location. We ran out to students that come to the University of Maryland. And every month, we make $1,000. $1,000. $1,000, but that income I didn't need to live on it, that income we invest. So you build a portfolio that actually pays you. So this is why you gotta learn the system, right? Because if your whole life is a job, 
If that job is no longer there, then what? You got zero. So when the sequestration and furlough hit, and they reduced our incomes from the federal government by 20%, my coworkers were panicking. Right? Because if your bills are more than 80% of your income, and the government reduced you from 100 to 80%, something is not getting paid. Right? And they get, Brian, Brian, aren't you guys, you know, upset? I said, I know what I'm going to do with my free day. <laughs> because I, because at that point, by, by, by the time, from when we graduated to 2013, we had built assets that pay us independently of us. The wealthiest people in this world make money while they sleep. I was somebody over here was talking about how much you like to sleep. When you make money while you sleep, will you sleep more? <laughs> you sleep in? Think about that. You gotta take 25% of your income out the gate, get in the habit of doing it now. And right now you're probably thinking about, wow, how am I gonna do that, right? But let me tell you how. Say you make $25,000 a year right now. You got a part-time job or whatever it is. Maybe you make nothing. You get your first job, you make it $40,000. Well, before you were making nothing, right? Well, if you took $10,000 of that $40,000, now you're making 30. 30,000 is still more than nothing, right? So it's safe to say that you can still increase your lifestyle to some degree. You're just going to take some off the top because you know you don't know where you're going to be five years from now. You don't know where you're going to be ten years from now. And your responsibility is going to change. Some of you are going to have kids, you're going to have families, you're going to have homes, you're going to have cars. You're going to have a lot of different things happen. But if you apply this very simple principle, take 25% of your income and put it away. Get to seek a financial plan. Seek someone that can show you, listen, this is how you can do this. And let me design a plan for you that if you take 25% of your income, we're going to put it in here that's conservative, safe, or whatever, aggressive, whatever you want to do. And then we're going to take that money, and once it grows, we're going to buy a property. We're going to, why? Because property, God's not making any more land. Right? It's a, it, it's a, it's a, uh, only a certain amount of properties. It's a commodity. Okay? This is what the wealthiest people do. Okay? The second thing the wealthiest people do that you got to learn in some way, somehow, and this, 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 this is big, is businesses. Find a way to get involved, start businesses, own businesses. Businesses is what makes this country great. And unless you know that and learn that, you're only, gonna, you're, you're only one or two people in this country, unfortunately. This is the reality. I'm just, can, we, can we be real? We all family, right? We family, right? right? I'm going to be real. So, there's only two types of people out there. Either you're, either you're being leveraged or you're leveraging. You're either one or the other. Sometimes you, you can easily be both, but you're either being leveraged or you're leveraging. Business owners leverage other people. Right? Pay them something, but at the end of the day, that business is making an income, and that business owner, or owners, or shareholders, or whoever, is making money off your efforts. Okay? You gotta understand that you cannot just stay on that side of the equation. Right? The wealthiest people, that 3%, they understand that the only way you're gonna be financially free is to get on the leverage side, that you're leveraging others. I hope you guys are following me because I'm telling you right now, you're getting, you're getting a, like an MBA uh, 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 course slash investment. You're getting a lot right now. But if, if, you, if you understand one thing, is that the world, if you have information at your fingertips. 20 years ago, they didn't have that. This information was like close over. The power of Google and the internet and Amazon, you can read on anything. I'm just saying read on something that you can apply to your life, start small, and over time, you're gonna look up after 10 years and you're gonna be in a dramatically different position than your peers. Because you understood the importance of financial literacy. That's what the 3% have. That's what we learned. All right? Awesome. So, so as we wrap it up, There's one, there's one thing I, I want to I, I kind of close it out with, and that's the debt. And 
you guys, uh, most college students, you know, leave college with about twenty, thirty thousand dollars in debt. And, 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 and so, he, he stay with me because this, because this is this is serious. Because um, it's not just custom, it's not just student loan debt either. It's credit card debt, right? You you, you ever wondered why you know Bank of America or, or Chase Bank or Capital One, whatever one it is now? goes around campus and gets students to sign up for credit cards. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Well, well, what you guys got to understand is that system, that debt system, that financial system, you have to learn. You have to understand how your credit score works. If you don't, there's a great book that you can read that explains it. You have to teach our community how to manage money. Otherwise, we'll, get a, we'll hit a plateau. Our community will hit a plateau. And so debt is one of those things that um, um, people, a lot of people are scared of from. They say, oh, I don't want to get into debt. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get a credit card. I'm not going to well, only buy my car in cash. I'm not going to do any of that stuff. And then when they go to try to buy a house, it says, well, you don't got bad credit. You got no credit. You fail to understand the system. Does that make sense? At the age of 23, me and my, uh, 23, 22. What house? 23. At the age of 23, we bought our first house. And we all know if you product of the public school system, we product of the public school system, there are good schools and there's bad schools. Right? And so it's a, it's a different way of, of, of thinking about what it is that you're going out into. Alright? And so with that, guys, we appreciate your time. That's the end of our talk. Ms. Cosmo for, for inviting us. Yeah, Thank you for Ms. Cosmo. So the question was, I, 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 the question was about our workshops. So um, me and Brian have a, a workshop series we call Life 101. It's like the series where we, where we go into detail about the different areas that we touched in. And, and some of you um, in here have been to some of our workshops, so you can you guys can talk with. But what I would advise you to do is to stay connected to the campus. And if you stay connected to the Alumni Association, you would know when these things, these things happen. And, and so outside of the book list and, and doing research on your own, and, and, and I tell people, leverage the time that you got. I love taking the train to DC. 45 minutes in, 45 minutes out, I read both ways. In a, in a month's time, I read five books. That's more books than most people read in their entire year. Does that make sense? And so, <laughs> entire year. And so, the workshops that we do, um, the workshops that we do, um, seminars that we do, um, we do we, we do them here on campus. Um, we do other campus invite, uh, invite us. We do Coppin State. We've been all over the place. So we'll get the information out. I would say get in touch with the Alumni Association. I would say join the Alumni Association because that's the best way, that's the best way to, to, to connect with us. Um, if, if you guys got questions for us, um, if you guys got questions for us, what did you say? And we hire Depends on what you do. Um, if you text... To, to, I know people are going to have questions and they'll say, what about this, what about that? So we like to give our information out because this is our home. We, we, you know, if these walls can talk, uh, it, it missed us. Don't, let her get, don't get her started. <laughs> um, if these walls can talk, you guys will know that, that, that home is where the heart is for us. And so one of the things that we like to do is we always like to connect with, with Marin and alum. So if you text a senior... UM, like senior, like you're a senior classman, senior UM, that's what you're going to text in the text body, 255469. That will get you our contact information, um, our email address, and all of that good stuff. Make sense? I missed this. Y'all want to pay attention. All right. So you're going to text. You're gonna text senior UM. That's the that is the that's what you're gonna put in, in the text body in the, in the message of the text. The number you text into is five five four six nine five five four six nine. That's that. Senior UM. It'll pop right back to you. And, and just and just and just one thing. Okay. 
Give it a shout. That's, that's one, one thing. Why, why he's doing that? One word. One word. It's all one word. No spaces. All right? So now he's got it. Hey, listen. This guy. No, seriously. 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 We got to go. Um, but listen. For those of you who are texting that, and, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and, I, and I don't come speak for him, but I'm speaking more for myself. For those of you who are texting it, understand that time is money. And time is the one commodity that you don't ever give back. Okay? We all get 24 hours in a day. No matter how much money you make or how little you make, no matter how smart you are, how dumb you are, how rich you are, poor, you only get 24 hours in a day. So if you reach out to us, be serious about whatever it is that you're going to reach out to us about. We take everything that we do very seriously. And we take it with the, with the sense of excellence that I talked about. So, if you take one step for yourself, we'll definitely take two more with you. Okay? But you got to understand that we operate in the world. The 3% operate at this level. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, just be sincere about any actions you take when you leave this, 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 this place. And I promise you, you'll, you'll get any goal that you see. But if you're not serious, don't waste our time, don't waste your time. I hope you heard something that resonated with you. But guys, there's a battle going on out there. And you have everything that you need to win right here. But if you don't do it, no one's gonna do it for you. That's just not how it works in the real world. Nobody's going to push you. Am I making sense? All right. Thank you, guys. Abdul Jallo, economics major. Uh, he plans on traveling after work. And uh, his organization and affiliations are best buddies. Abina Wariyabi. Uh, she is an English major uh, after graduation. For being a language assistant and intern during in an internship in Spain. Arjuna Smith, becoming oh, an information system major, working as a financial analysis and kinesiology major. Plans after graduation, uh, team physical therapist. Alicia, Alicia Whittington. She plans to pursue her dream working as an event in event management. And we have Jasmine Lache Lachey Mays. She's a music performance major, and she's currently applying for uh, graduate studies. And her Alpha Data Gamma Multicultural Sorority. Okay. We have Janae Greenwood. She is majoring in elementary education, and she plans to become an educator who can inspire young children and eventually start a nonprofit organization to motivate and promote her name. Okay, oh. <laughs> we have Josie Johnson, and he is an um, atmospheric and oceanic science major and wants to be in the U.S. Air Force and a weather officer. And currently the uh, Air Force ROTC and Alpha Tau Omega fraternity. And we have Chowan in Basel. In Basel. And he is a government and politics major and going to Mozambique to learn Portuguese and intern for 10 months. And we have Josie Tosa. Tosa. And she's going to middle school, medical school at the University of Missouri after she graduates. And then her MPH. Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, a sorority incorporated member, incorporated with the African Student Association. Olu Olu Dunapa a lawyer, microbiology major. Major psychology, eventually plans to attend medical school. Oluwatobi Alawale, major economics, Spanish author. 
Page Thurles, major finance, plans to reside in the DC metro area, working in the financial sector, turning incorporated. Yeah, I am. Hello, um, Eric Bose, mechanical engineering, plans to work at Agility government, uh, as a government contractor. Um, he has plans to come back for a master's program for secondary education. Sheree Bennett, studio art major, art history minor, after graduation plans to enroll in a master's program in design and visual communications at Virginia Commonwealth University. Shayma Jimmy, Biological Sciences minor in Human Development. San, Sonia Stanley, Sociology major, 